everybody, welcome back to my channel. I think that will still feel weird for a really long time. I'm excited to do today's video. I think that this is definitely high yield. A lot of people are getting ready to start studying for their MCAT or have started already and are looking for some tips. So if you're anything like me, when you started your MCAT journey, you were kind of browsing through YouTube, looking up online, like how should I study for the MCAT and what should I do? And I just wanna do a big disclaimer here in that the MCAT is so huge, it's such a big test. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. So this is just my own journey and I think that everyone's is gonna to be totally different. I just wanted to do this video and maybe you could learn some things um, from me and learn from the mistakes that I made along the way. So without further ado, let's get into my MCAT journey. <laughs> I just want to start with my resources and what I used. So for me, I went with the Kaplan books. Um, I read reviews and honestly, between Princeton Review and Kaplan, there wasn't a huge difference, but I just decided to go with Kaplan and I bought my books off of Amazon a ways before I started studying just so that I would have them. I also used MCATSelfPrep.com, which I will talk about later and followed their kind of study plan. I used Quizlet, I used Anki, and then finally I bought the AMC bundle package online only version. So those are the resources I used and let's just get started talking about my timeline. So for me, I felt like I needed to finish biochem at least semester one or term one for me before I felt comfortable taking the exam. And with when I wanted to apply and how I wanted to do things, unfortunately, I had to take my exam at the end of June. So it was really like the last possible test day to be able to apply in this last cycle. So I started studying in March. So I had about four months to study and I felt like this was going to be enough time for me because a lot of the subjects were still very fresh. I was at the time working as a physics learning assistant so I was going through the physics cycle again. I had just finished biochemistry, I was just finishing organic chemistry, and I'm a psych major so all of those classes are super fresh for me. So I felt like I didn't need to devote months and months, but if you're a non-traditional student, it's been a while since you've taken um, some of these classes, it might take a little longer for content review and stuff like that. And that's why I said like, the MCAT journey is so different from person to person because everyone's at different stages, but that's just kind of what I thought would work for me. So back to mistake number one, if I could go back and do anything differently, Ideally, if you take it April or earlier, because that gives you enough time to get your score back and really decide if you want to apply that cycle. And it even gives you the opportunity to retake in the same cycle if you wanted to. So I would say April or earlier for test day. So mistake number one, take it earlier, because I was sitting there wondering, should I submit my application? Is my score gonna be good enough? And all of that, and it was not ideal. So definitely, yeah, mistake number one, take it earlier. So from there, I just wanna talk about my study plan and what I did. So in March, I decided that I was going to take like a rough practice exam. So I just kinda of wanted to see where I was at. I took the Kaplan review one first. Um, just because it was free and I just wanted to take one and see where I was at. It was timed, but I kind of rushed through some that I didn't know, but it was just kind of trying to get a feel for where I was at. And I think I ended up scoring like a 500 or right below. So I was like, okay, definitely need some studying. And so that's where I started. And from there, I started doing content review. And this is what took the bulk of my time. So to do this, I used MCATSelfPrep.com. And if you haven't heard of it, I highly suggest you check it out. Even if you don't buy anything from them and just use their free course outline, it was so helpful. And I've only bought their $99 Quizlet question pack, but other than that, everything else was free and I utilized a lot of their resources. I will put a little video here of me just scrolling through, um, but pretty much what MCAT self prep does is it breaks everything down by subject and then within subjects it goes by section 
And in each section, there's a playlist of videos that are like all the best videos you would be able to find on YouTube. And they're all compiled into one playlist. And so it's awesome. You don't have to go search through YouTube on your own. Um, a lot of the videos within the playlist are repetitive, but it's just so you can pick which ones you want to watch. So what I would do is I decided that I was going to try to tackle a certain amount of topics each day. And that just depended on my schedule for that day or that week and what would fit in with my other activities going on. I was still working at the time as a scribe. I was working as a physics learning assistant. I was in school full time. Um, and I was still waitressing at the beginning of it, but I ended up stopping that midway through. So I was definitely busy, so it wasn't like I had hours and hours every day to study. So how much I studied depended on the day completely. MCAT self prep was super helpful, and I decided that I would go into a section within a subject, pick a topic, and within that it shows you the videos, but then it also tells you what section in the book to read. And you can do either Kaplan or Princeton. So I had the Kaplan books, so I followed that. And while I was reading, I would make notes in the margins and then take the end of section quizzes, not the end of chapter quizzes, and I will get to that mistake later. But I did the end of section quizzes. And from there, if I was struggling with things throughout the section, I would make an Anki card and then I would put that into one big master like MCAT deck. As time went on, that's what I did. I went through all of the subjects on MCAT self prep, all of the sections, um, reading the book first, watching videos if I was still confused, and then making Anki questions off of that. I ended up buying the Quizlet questions from MCAT self prep and I also did those at the end of each section. And then I would make the master deck of the Anki cards from the Quizlet cards that I was struggling with. So everything went into Anki eventually. And if you haven't used Anki, I'll talk about that maybe in another video if you're interested, but it's just a really good way to do spaced repetition memory. And so instead of using Quizlet, I would put the Quizlet questions into Anki, the ones I was struggling with, um, to review as I went on. So that's what I did for every topic. And some topics, if I felt really solid on and have reviewed them multiple times, I would kind of just skim through it and do the end of section quizzes and then move on because I didn't feel like I needed to devote too much time. But like I said, I had a second mistake. I saved the end of chapter quizzes because I was afraid I wouldn't have as many practice questions as I would like at the end. Turns out I had so many practice questions with the AMC bundle that I didn't need to do that and I should have done the end of chapter quizzes as I went along to kind of test where I was at. So that's mistake number two and something I hope you can learn from. I think the end of chapter quizzes are really helpful um, to kind of test where you're at. So that's what I would do. The content review stage took about two months for me, maybe two and a half. And then I was still kind of finishing up school and so I just used the next two-ish weeks while I was still in school to review the things that I was still struggling with and still kept going through my Anki master deck as well as took one more practice test. And from there I finished with my school, finished finals, and then I had two and a half weeks of like nothing but MCAT. And if you can do that, I highly suggest it. Um, I was able to work out with my employers. I only had one or two shifts during that time. So I was able to vote to, to devote a good chunk of time towards MCAT studying. And this is when I was like practice, practice, practice. I took, I think six practice exams within this two and a half weeks. And so I would take a test review it for a day, then review it for another day, and then take another test. So basically every third day I was taking an exam up until four days before my exam, which is when I just started doing practice questions. And then two days before, all I did were my Anki cards. I didn't want to overwhelm myself. I wanted to have a little break. And then my test day was June 28th. So my mistake number three is I really wish I could have extended this time maybe like one or two more weeks and started by doing just more practice questions rather than jumping straight into practice exams. 
and having a little more time to review. I really think that would have boosted my score, but it happened the way it happened, but hopefully you can learn from it. And if you could give yourself three to four weeks of practice tests and practice questions, I think that would definitely have boosted my score and hopefully will boost yours as well. But let's just talk about how I did. I set my goal at a 510. I did not think that I was going to reach 520 or above. I knew that I was going to be working, I was going to be in school, and I also knew that I had a lot of other things in my application that would help me stand out as a candidate. And I didn't think, obviously it would be great to get a super high MCAT score, but I didn't think that it was super necessary for me. I just wanted to get do as well as I could with the time that I had. Ultimately, I didn't end up meeting my 510 goal. I ended up getting a 507, and I did very poorly in the bio and the chem section, honestly, compared to what I had been doing in practice tests. So that was a bit of a bummer, and I kind of attribute that to a little bit of test anxiety, and also I think I should have devoted more time to those sections. So that is my third mistake. I wish that I would have noticed my strengths earlier on. I was always doing well in the psych sections because I'm a psych major, as well as in the cars section. I've always been pretty good at reading comprehension tests. And I kind of wish I had backed off on cars and psych and devoted more time to bio and chem and physics. So if you're watching this, um, recognize your strengths and strengths are a good thing. That means that you can devote less time to them and more to other things. So I wish I would have done that. In chem phys, I got a 125. In cars, I got a 128. In psych soc, I got a 130. And in bio and biochem, I got a 124. And that was a really sad number to see, but it was okay. In total, I got a 507. And I think if I had made those changes, I really think that that could have boosted my score even up to like a 515. Um, so if you're watching this and you're saying, oh, she only got a 507, why would I listen to her video? And for others, that's a great score. So everyone's different again. But if you're feeling like that, then just think that taking my study plan and just implementing those things that I would have done differently, it definitely could boost the score. I don't know, it's hard to know what would happen, but I think that I definitely could have boosted my score if I had changed those mistakes. But luckily, I got accepted into a school so I don't have to retake it. And honestly, when I got my acceptance, that was the first thing I thought about is I don't have to take the MCAT again. Okay, so just to review, I think it's worthy of noting how much money I spent on materials. I think that when you're not following a course, you definitely still are gonna pay some money, but it's significantly less than paying for a course. So if it works for you to do self-guided study, then I would recommend it. I got a score that was good enough to get me into some schools. Here was my cost breakdown. The Kaplan books, when I bought them, were about 160. Anki is free, which is great. Quizlet is free, but I bought the Quizlet questions from MCAT Self Prep, and that was $99. The AAMC bundle, which comes with, I believe, four practice tests and tons of questions from a question bank. That was 270, and then the MCAT itself was 320. So in total, I spent $850. And I know it sounds like a lot, but it was spaced out over time. And if you can do that, that's great. And then just to review my mistakes here, first mistake, I would have taken my test sooner, April or before if you're going to be applying that cycle. Mistake number two is I would have done those chapter quizzes from the Kaplan books as I went along rather than doing them all at the end because like I said, with the AMC bundle and the question packs, you have so many questions. I didn't even get through them all because I didn't have time. Definitely would have taken those chapter quizzes. I think it would have been better to assess how I was doing as I went along. Mistake number three is I wish I would have extended my practice test, practice question phase a little longer. So instead of doing two and a half weeks, maybe push that to four weeks or even longer if you have the time. So that was mistake number three. And then finally, mistake number four is I wish I would have recognized my strengths early on and devoted more time to my weaknesses. I think it would have boosted my score. But overall, I was pretty happy 
with where I ended up and it got me accepted. I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you can learn from my mistakes and get a better score than I did or get the same score or lower score if that works for you. Everyone is different. Um, the MCAT is a beast of a test, so just finishing it is something to congratulate yourself for. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, leave me a comment. I'd be happy to answer them. And subscribe to my channel so you can see more.